Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys. So I wanted to come on here and do an update because I've been getting a lot of requests for this video. My video is once again going viral. Even though it was recorded three years ago, it's all over Facebook. And people have literally been leaving comments like every day since this news just updated. So if you guys do not know, I did a video three years ago on the infamous Dancerette's coach. His name is John Connor. And basically, he was on this show called Bring It with Coach D and the women and the um, DD4L, the dolls, the dancing dolls. And that's my show. And so it came out back in 2016 that basically he had been arrested. A teenage boy who was 16 at the time said that he had been sleeping with him. He met him on social media and the coach had been sleeping with him. And then he started hearing rumors that the coach was HIV positive. So at that point, he decided to go and get tested. Um, and the results came back that he too was positive. So then he went to the police to go file charges on him and he was arrested. But I remember when I did that video, I talked about certain points, the way the coach kept going to social media, trying to talk about his depression, and you know admitting to the world quote unquote that he was HIV positive um, only then for everything to blow up like a month later I felt like back then that he knew he was guilty and he was trying to basically deflect and make excuses so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a snippet of this flashback from me reading what he had wrote on Facebook back in 2016 y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary three days before he posted this on Facebook saying that he had attempted to kill himself by taking two bottles of pills um, they end up putting him like in a they end up taking him to the hospital and sending him to a mental institution and putting him on suicide watch um, he's also saying that he's no longer hide, he's no longer in hiding and he's not afraid to be who he is and what kind of caught me with this long post is he's saying I just found out I suffer from depression of not being able to cope with the fact that I was given HIV He's saying that he just found out that he suffers from depression of not being able to cope with the fact that he was given HIV. And then he says, yes, I said I am HIV positive, but I thank God for protecting me and keeping me undetectable. This is a hard pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, it's something I have to deal with. So to me, you know, looking back on that post from August 12th, to where he's at right now, September 18th, you know, I feel like he had put that out there because he knew that there might have been enough evidence to criminally charge him. That's why he's making statements like, I just found out I suffer from depression because somebody gave me HIV and I thank God for keeping me undetectable. And he wrote that like in huge letters and he made that bold. And I feel like he was almost preparing people for this news getting ready to break in a few weeks. You know, so the whole situation is just really, really crazy. This is the mugshot of John Connor the third, also known as Coach John on the hit reality TV show, Bring It. Connor was known as the coach of the Memphis team, the infamous Dancerettes. So what I did was... Now he's charged with statutory rape by an authority figure, criminal exposure to HIV, and soliciting sexual exploitation of a minor. I think this is horrible. Patrick Savage works at this grocery store near where police say 26-year-old Connor first met up with the then 16 year old boy. This is a very busy intersection. You know, you wouldn't think it is, but it get very loud traffic comes up down through him. The victim told police in August he met his dance coach John Connor through social media early last year. After that, they met up frequently for unprotected sex. Officers say when the victim found out about Connor's positive HIV status, he went to police. Since Connor's arrest, he's made several posts on Facebook defending himself. But when we went to Connor's last known address, we were told to come back another time. I don't understand me. Ricky Richardson is a coach for a Memphis youth basketball team. He says Connor failed as a coach. Richardson says parents shouldn't be afraid to ask questions when it involves their children's activities or safety. Even if it's doing a background check on the coaches or the staff.
All right, so you guys just watched that flashback. And then I also showed you guys the updated news clip. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what the article is saying about the situation, okay? Because this is the same man who his fans were attacking me and telling me that I was bogus and I didn't have any information and I need to take down the video. Now we fast forward three years later. Everything I said in that video, everything I felt in my gut has now come to pass. So now this is what's being said. They're saying the dance teacher featured on TV's reality TV show has pled guilty to multiple felonies. The charges include statutory rape of one member of his dance team. 30-year-old John Connor III, also known as Coach John on the Lifetime TV series Bring It, has also been charged with criminal exposure to HIV. Connor is known as the coach of the Memphis team called the Infamous Dancerettes. Authorities say he is charged with statutory rape by an authority figure, criminal exposure to HIV, and solicitation of sexual exploitation of a minor. According to court documents, the dance instructor met a teen boy on social media. After meeting the defendant, the teen then joined his dance team, the infamous Dancerettes. Connor and the dance team appeared on Bring It, a lifetime reality TV show focused on competitive dance in Memphis. After a few months of working together, Connor, 26 at the time, and then 16-year-old victim, met on many occasions outside the dance studio. The two had unprotected sex several times in Connor's car. Authorities say Connor had tested positive for HIV in 2012 and knew he was infected before having unprotected sex with the teen. Officers say that when the victim found out about Connor's positive status, he went to the police. John Connor III waived his rights waived his right to a trial this week and pled guilty to felony charges of criminal exposure to HIV, statutory rape by then authority figure and solicitation of a minor. Since Connor's arrest, he has made several posts on Facebook and Instagram defending himself. Connor is scheduled to be sentenced on December 20th for criminal exposure to HIV, statutory rape and solicitation of a minor. He faces charges in not one, but two similar cases with one of them involving another minor. So do y'all see like just the mess of this situation? Not only was he sitting here messing with one minor and exposing them to HIV and that minor ended up catching HIV, mind you. He then did this to two other people. And out of those two other people, that one was also a minor. And this is why, like I said in my original video, that as parents, we have to talk to our children. Just because somebody wears the, the, the moniker coach or pastor or, you know, deacon, that means nothing. That does not mean that they are trustworthy to be around your children. That does not mean that they may not mean harm to your children. You need to talk to your kids that stuff like this is not okay. And if you're going to engage in sex with somebody, be it somebody that you shouldn't be sleeping with who's older than you, you need to protect yourself. And too many times, you know, these kids feel like they can do whatever and there's no consequences to it. You know, had he not been exposed to HIV, would this young boy have even said anything? You know, that's the thing. We need to talk to our kids about protecting themselves because shit out here is real. You have a lot of nefarious people out here who don't care who they hurt. And another thing I really feel like this whole undetectable thing. I think this whole undetectable thing is making people really comfortable. Just because you're undetectable, does that mean that you can't put other people at risk when you're engaging in raw sex? And I think that undetectable thing with the whole HIV status has gotten a lot of people comfortable and has made a lot of people feel like, well, since I'm undetectable, I don't have to tell you my status, which is totally wrong. Regardless if you're detectable or undetectable, you should always be open and upfront about your status with other people. And this is not me trying to offend anyone because I know I have subscribers, you know what I'm saying, who are living with HIV and things like that. But what I'm saying is this man also stated that he was undetectable as well. So my thing is, if he was so undetectable, how did this 16-year-old boy get HIV? So that's all I'm saying is that regardless if you feel like you're undetectable and you can't, you know, you're not at risk to infect anybody, you should always be honest. You know what I'm saying? So at least that way, you're giving that person a conscious choice if they want to put themselves at risk and things like that. And if they choose and say, no, I'm good, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to engage, then that's fine. And if they feel comfortable enough to still engage because you're undetectable, then that's fine. But there should always be an open line of communication and honesty. And I'm noticing that it seems like a lot of people are getting super comfortable with this undetectable status and they're not being as open and upfront as they should be. Now, did he have any business engaging with sex with a minor? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is that everyone needs to be honest about their status one way or another. 
because at the end of the day, you're putting somebody's life in potential jeopardy and that's not okay. So this entire situation is just really disturbing. But like I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. I wasn't buying all the bullshit he was writing on Facebook and his mama, you know, going off on people and cussing folks out. Now your son has pled guilty to these charges. What do you got to say now? Probably nothing. But anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning John Connor of the infamous Dancerette, how do you guys feel about these new revelations? Because he denied this for years. Now it's come out that he's not only admitted to this, but he's also pled guilty. And from what I'm hearing, he's looking at close to 20 years in prison. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.